There's always that first sip where you're worried it's too hot and you're like, this is a mistake, this is a mistake. And then the coffee hits your lips and you're like, nah, I'm cool, I'm cool. I feel like my lips are used to years of like being burnt by just too hot coffee. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I really, like I genuinely just needed those few sips of coffee to be able to <sighs> kickstart my day. It's a rainy day. So usually I've been sitting in front of the window and really enjoying just the daylight, but it is so gray. I've got my ring light on the lowest setting. So just FYI. So I have all of my favorites and least favorite things from the month. I am doing this mostly makeup, but I'm trying to infuse uh, more stuff. I know I've heard from you guys and I, trust me, I'm feeling the same way. I'm a little bit makeup overwhelmed. I don't mean just like right now at this time of the year, I mean in life. <laughs> and I love makeup and this channel will always have makeup on it, but I'm definitely, you may have noticed, slowly infusing other things on my channel because that's what I enjoy. And I know a lot of you guys are enjoying that too. I have uh, some skincare, a fragrance, some hair care stuff to bring up today. And then of course the makeup. We will start with the makeup today. Also, y'all like my shirt? Rugrats, man. It's a cropped shirt um, from Target. I think I can find it online still. It was from two Target hauls ago, but I did recently put up a Target haul. If you're interested in watching, it was like clothing and candles and jewelry and home goods and a little bit of makeup splashed in. So I'll link that below. It was, I think my most recent upload, but anyway, I'm getting off track and I haven't even started, but this was bought two Target trips ago. <laughs> So let's start with the makeup. This might've been my longest intro ever. So I'm gonna go in the order of my face. I did put these on my face today so you'll see me applying them. You can kind of get an idea of what they look like. My first favorite is, well, technically skincare. It's the Tatcha the Dewy Skin Cream. Now stay with me, cause this is $70. I'm fully aware that that is a ridiculous price. The rest of these are not $70, okay? <laughs> I almost didn't mention it, but I'm trying to be better about, and you guys will call me out because I try, I'm, if I like something really expensive, I'm very apologetic. And that's because it's ridiculously priced, but when it's really, really good, I still want you guys to know about it. So I'm trying to be less apologetic, but I'm a drugstore girl at heart. So sometimes it's hard to recommend something this expensive. This is a cream that I wear during the day. You can wear it morning and night. I apply this to my face before I put on makeup as the last step just before I put on sunscreen and then primer. Let me show you a close up right now of this on my face. I feel like it leaves my skin really, really hydrated, really glowy but it's not shimmery, it's not glittery, it's nothing like that. It's like a true glass skin kind of a skin cream and that's why I love this. And the reason I decided to mention it is, it's one of the few face creams that I can put on no matter how many layers I've got on and it doesn't pill up under primer and foundation. The next favorite is the SPF and forgive me if I mentioned this last month, but I cannot stop talking about it. I was just telling my friends about it the other day. It's the Polish Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense, SPF of 30. It's got good skincare in it. It's got antioxidants. It's got Reservatrol, which is supposed to help with anti-aging. So it's not only protecting you from the sun, but it actually has other good stuff in it. A lot of the SPFs I've loved over the years are just that, SPF. And there's nothing wrong with that because you're probably putting other skincare on too. But I love that this also has those added benefits. And not only that, it's tinted. Don't let that throw you because like, even for me, I'm like, well, that's too dark. It doesn't matter because the tint pretty much goes away, but it's such a thin product and it, it stays like matte. Like it doesn't add that crazy greasy feeling to your skin. It also doesn't add a white cast to your skin. I just really, really adore this product. This is the second bottle of this. I used to have this long ago. I already have a backup of it. I highly recommend it. Ooh. Um, so the only primer I have on today is, whew, beautiful. This is the Milani Soft Focus Glow Complexion Enhancer. I have the shade number one, Nude Glow. I haven't seen the other shades of this, but it's got a, the packaging is just beautiful. It's also got a pump. When I first got this, I thought, oh, it's a, like a cream highlight. But then the more I've played with it, I'm like, no, no, I think it's really meant to be like you can put it on your skin wherever you want it. So I've been putting it on as a primer everywhere but my nose. My nose naturally gets oilier and redder and I don't really need to add any glow to it. This is so beautiful. It's a dupe for a really expensive product. I'm filming a dupes video, I think tomorrow, that I'm pumped about. This will be in it and we'll be doing a wear test with this versus the other product and the other ones too. So stay tuned, I'm so excited for that. I don't think it's one of those primers that's gonna like make your foundation magically last longer, but that's not really its intent. It really is to add this really soft glow to your skin. Again, there's no shimmer, there's no glitter, it's just this really beautiful glow to it. So the next product is is a meh product. It's from Bare Minerals and it's their foundation stick. I guess it's, I like it and that's why I'm including it. 
but I'm still trying to figure this out. And I wanted to bring it up to ask your guys' opinion because it's a stick cream foundation. It's incredibly emollient. It just like, whew, it feels like low key, like grease paint. It, it just glides across the skin, but it's not that thick. That sounds really negative. I don't mean it that way. But it's like the truest hydrating cream foundation stick I've ever used. It really is. So if you've got the most dry skin, but here's the thing. I find that sometimes when I apply it, it's, it catches in weird spots. So I applied it on this side of my face with the sponge and you can see it definitely shears it out as sponges do. So then I applied it on this side of my face with a brush and it definitely has more coverage with the brush, but I find that I have to use a brush to apply it all over but then I have to go in with the sponge and kind of tap some areas out because it definitely catches in weird ways. So if you've tried this and you find it difficult to work with, try it that way. Use a brush first, then go in with the sponge. Like, especially like I get it caught here and around my nose. I think it's just one of those products you have to futz with a little bit. I have to set my T-zone and I'm not an oily girl, so keep that in mind. I think if you got oily skin, you'd absolutely detest this. I would try the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. That one's a little more expensive, but it definitely stays in place longer and I love that one. This one is nice though. And the shade match, I have the lightest shade, Opal 01. Um, and it's actually a really, really good shade match for me. I like it, but it's just got a learning curve. Maybe that's what it is. So there you go. I don't want to mention this. I can't stop talking about it, but it is so flipping good. It's sold out like everywhere. I think Milk Makeup site still has this, but it's been sold out in Sephora like for forever. Um, this is the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Baked. I've traveled with this. I've used this literally every day. I'm really struggling to use any of my other bronzers because I don't want to. <laughs> it's so good. So it's just a stick cream bronzer and I just kind of apply it where I want it on my face, like on under my cheekbones. And then I use, well, my favorite brush. This is technically not a favorite, but I mean, it really is amazing. It might as well be, so I can link it. This is the Sephora Pro number 41 brush. I use this to blend it in and it is so, these two together are magic. It is the easiest thing in the world. You can just keep blending. If you get it a little low, keep blending and it'll kind of look a little more even. You can use your sponge to get things. It's just the easiest product to work with ever, 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 ever. It's so good, there's a reason it's sold out. And frankly, that's gonna last me mm, forever. It, I mean, eventually it'll go bad, but I'm using it like crazy and I haven't had to like roll it up once and I've used it every day for like two months. I don't. So the next product is from Kosas. It's this Color and Light Cream in Eighth Muse. It's a little duo. I mentioned this in my, I mentioned a couple of these in my What to Buy at Sephora video. So I will link that below as well. I was very proud of that one. And if you didn't know, the Sephora VIB sale is going on right now for Rouge, depending on when you're watching it, but on May 2nd, anyone can shop the sale. And if you're just joining their like rewards program, the Beauty Insiders, you at least get 10%. So it's a good time to get some of these things. If you're thinking about it, it might be worth waiting till May 2nd. Not mating till May 2nd. <laughs> That's different. This is gorgeous, you guys. This is so flipping gorgeous. And I said in that video, this is another one of those products. I very rare, rarely say that something expensive is worth the money. This is 100% worth the money. There's nothing like this at the drugstore. This pink I applied to my cheeks today. I just swipe my sponge in it and tap it on. It has a lot of nice pigment, but the beauty is, even if you feel like, ooh, I applied a little too much, again, it blends beautifully. Grab the other end of your sponge, tap it in, and it's just flawless. The highlight, same thing. I grab my sponge and tap it into it and tap it onto my cheekbones. Beautiful. It's one of those things that makes your complexion look like it's naturally youthful. That's all I have on for highlight and blush today. I don't need, I don't feel like I need powder. I don't miss it. It's just one of those things that, you know, when you see someone, it's always for me, like someone's in line, like in front of me and I'm like, oh my gosh, like she looks so glowy and youthful. I feel like it's products like this that do that. And this is one of my favorites I've ever, ever found. I am like really loving some products right now. Um, so the eye primer that took me by surprise is from Revolution. It's sold at Ulta. This is their cut crease canvas. Now y'all know me, I'm a pretty simple makeup look kind of person. I'm not a makeup artist. So when I bought this, I really just bought it because I was like, that sounds gimmicky and silly and I was gonna do like a gimmicky video, but then I tried it and I'm like, dang, no, this ain't gimmicky. This is actually really good. Now I don't do cut creases. However, this is just an amazing eye primer. If you have veining, purple tones, bruising maybe, I don't know. This is, it literally is like a little paintbrush and it is the most pigmented eye primer I've ever tried in my life. Like it just continually spreads and spreads and spreads and spreads. You need the tiniest amount, but 
I use a brush to blend it. It's another Sephora brush. I know, bear with me. I'm really addicted to that brush line. It's their number 57. It's my favorite brush to blend out like eye primer. <laughs> you guys, it stays in place. It holds onto shadow. It is absolutely incredible. It stays in place. It really cancels out discoloration. It, I was very, very impressed by it. So next up is the eyeshadow I'm wearing. This is, oh, such a good palette. I have never been disappointed by Pixie eyeshadows, ever. I don't think I've ever tried a palette of theirs that I was like, ooh, this stinks, no. Um, so this I think is around 20 bucks. It is the Natural Beauty palette. It's like a cool tone palette upon first glance, but then when you look closer, there are a few warm shadows. Their shimmers are so gorgeous. Today I'm wearing this kind of shimmery ivory shade all over my lid, and then I use this warmer medium brown in my crease. And then I actually took this shade here and put a light layer of that on top of the ivory just to tone it down a bit. And then I used um, kind of both of these shades on my lower lash line. And then I lined my top lash. The only liner I have on is this dark brown shade. And then I think, oh yeah, I put a little bit of that same ivory shimmer in the inner corner. This is the easiest palette to blend, the easiest palette to work with, and the shimmers and mattes are so gorgeous. Now, I don't think that their deep colors are as easy to work with as like some of the deeper colors in other palettes. If you're trying to line your eyes, it's not gonna give you a really solid line like other ones do. I don't mind for like a look I'm do I did today, but if I'm really wanting a crisp, dark line with a shadow, this isn't gonna do it for me. So that's something to keep in mind, but beyond that, Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so gorgeous. I can't believe more people aren't talking about this. Pixie is sold at Target. Let's talk the mascara I'm wearing. I didn't think I would fall in love with this as much as I did. This is from YSL, it's like a $30 mascara and it's called their The Shock Mascara. And I heard about it from a couple of YouTubers. I think I know Rach loves, loves it and I think Fleur de Force. <laughs> I was talking about this in the Sephora video too. And they said that they just absolutely love it and that it was super volumizing, super lengthening and boy is it ever. Sorry, I'm like watching my Amazon guy deliver some packages. Yay, I bought some new sleepers for Gigi because she has grown out of all of her sleep sack. This adds tons of volume, tons of blackness. It's just gorgeous. Now, mine is getting really old and crusty. I've had it for a couple months. So even today applying it, it was kind of clumping a bit and it never does that. It's really getting old, so I need to replace it. Um, I don't think I ended up buying, I already placed my VIB order like for this sale and I didn't end up rebuying it because I was like, I, I love my L'Oreal Lash Paradise just as much, so it's like, I really don't need to spend the money, but if you're wanting to feel real fancy, or you can afford it, or you have a gift card, this is beautiful. One layer and you're like done. But let's talk about a mascara I wasn't a big fan of. I used this on my lower lash today just to use it again, but I was like, ah, even there, I don't like it. Um, it's the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. I obviously, I've already talked about a Milk Makeup product here, I have found so many products from Milk that I adore. This was not one of them. This mascara, I think the people that love it, like I know Jay Kissa loves it, I think it's because it separates really well and it lengthens. But for me, it doesn't give me that volume I like. I like it to be just slightly clumpy. This doesn't do it. And it, I've been like thinking maybe it needs to dry out. Well, it has a little bit. It's still not doing it for me. And furthermore, and I don't know if this is to blame or not, so we'll see. I put it on the lower lash line to see if it happens again tonight. I used this yesterday to try it one more time. I was giving it one more chance. I had black all over my face, more than I ever have. And I didn't use any liner yesterday. I used eyeshadow, again, not this one. But it was so black and clumpy. I'm like, I, do, I don't even think it's possible for that to be eyeshadow the way that it looked. It looked like clumpy mascara. And that never happens to me, so I was like totally like blindsided. So I don't know, but this is just not, it's just not a favorite. I don't like it, I don't need to try that again. So the lip gloss I'm wearing that I love is this Revlon Super Lustrous Gloss. It's in the shade Rosy Future. This is the shade in particular I wanna mention. Cause the lip gloss form is pretty good, but I do think some of the shades are hit and miss. Again, I'm working on that dupes video, and I've been working on this video for uh, like six months. And this is definitely a dupe for a really popular lip product, so stay tuned for that as well. It's super lightweight, not sticky at all, very comfortable, it wears off nicely, it doesn't dry my lips out. I am a big fan of this lip gloss line, but particularly this shade. So a lip product I actually really like, but I can't find a shade that works for me, I've realized, 
is the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit line. I think these lip glosses are beautiful. They remind me of the Dose of Colors lip glosses. They're very creamy. They've got nice color payoff. They're comfortable to wear. If you have naturally pigmented lips, none of these really work unless I go for like the red or the berry, which I don't love like red and berry glosses. I'd rather it be something that's gonna stay in place. So the only way I've made these like neutral colors work is over a lipstick but on their own, none of them look good on me. I don't know guys. So I, 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 I'm hoping Wet n Wild comes out with maybe a couple more of this line that are just slightly more wearable for pigmented lipped girls. <laughs> it's a very specific problem, I know. Let's talk hair products. So, wow, I fell in love with this hairspray. I bought it on a whim, it's from Pantene. It's their air spray. And the gimmick behind this is it's alcohol free. So it doesn't have the drying alcohol that you're spraying all over your hair. Now, I love my Bedhead Masterpiece hairspray so much, regardless of the ingredients. I It is the best hairspray I've ever used. This does not have crazy strong hold. It says it's four out of five extra strong hold. No. <laughs> but it's one of those products that when I spray it in my hair, like here's a little bit of frizz here, okay? This is second day hair, so just bear with me. It just kind of like makes things look better. <laughs> but this is not something that's gonna like give your give your hair like volume and hold it in place. It's not the hairspray for this. But if you have naturally textured hair and you want something slightly lightweight, but that'll definitely do something, it'll kind of tame the frizz and hold things the way they are, this is it. I really like it. I can see myself repurchasing this definitely. And I really do think if you've got naturally curly, wavy textured hair that you actually will like this, unless you want it to be super crunchy and like you won't. But otherwise, I'm a big fan and it smells really nice. It smells like you freshly washed your hair when you spray this in. So a fragrance I've been loving is real expensive, but it's one that I don't hear a lot about and it smells so different than anything else I own perfume wise. This is the Nest Fragrances Indigo perfume and it smells, let me look up the notes because it's got this like deep like blackberry kind of a scent to it. But like I said, it is totally different than like my Chanel Coco Mademoiselle or my Miss Dior or those kinds of La Vie Belle, very sweet wonderful scents, this is totally the opposite. So I'm on Sephora, before I talk about the notes, it has, a, there's a mini rollerball for 27, and then the standard size, 1.7, is 74. Honestly, that's not that crazy for perfumes, so now I take back what I said. Perfumes are just expensive by their nature, seemingly. So, it's in the warm and spicy fragrance family. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is a warm scent, so that's interesting. Um, the scent type is cool spices, well there you go. The keynotes are bergamot and spices. Okay, we get it. <laughs> uh, fragrance description. Moroccan tea, cashmere wood, and black cardamom are enhanced with hints of wild fig and bergamot. These notes combine to create a captivating fragrance from, that transitions well from day to evening. It just smells so different. But this is one of those scents that is a very strong, specific scent. Don't buy this based on me telling you that I like it go smell it because it is very specific and you don't wanna buy this and be like, whoa, and just go smell it because it is very specific, but I can't, like I love wearing it because I'm like, it smells like clean and spicy, but slightly sweet. I can't explain it. It's unlike anything I've ever smelled. I really like it. And the bottle itself is flipping gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Another skincare product, I mentioned the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, but this is one that it's newer to me. It's from La Roche-Posay and it's their Tolerian Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. I am enjoying this. This is very, very similar to my CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser that I love. You can get that one at the drugstore. This I bought, I think I ended up buying it at Target because they have a lot of random kind of like French pharmacy brands and I really enjoy this. I want to try enough that I want to try other parts of their Tolerian line. It's very gentle. It is not drying at all. You know that tight feeling your skin gets sometimes when you clean it? You don't get that from this and that's why I appreciate it. I don't want to dry my skin out. It's not scented. If you've got sensitive skin, I think this would probably be a good option for you. So and the book I'm currently reading is the book Wild, which what's it? was it Reese Witherspoon that was in the movie? I've never seen the movie, um, but I'm reading it on my Kindle right now and ooh. If you've read it, there's a part where she talks about a loved one um, passing away and it was, I was up for hours just sobbing. I can't believe I didn't wake Tyler up and it was one of those things that I literally, it was so bad that I wanted, the way she described it was so real and raw. I, I wanted to literally stop reading the book. I was like, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. I literally am like, I'm not reading this book. I can't get past this. 
And then um, it was one of those things that I was like, no, I'm just gonna read and get past it because I know the whole book's not about this. At least I don't think it is. So I kept reading and reading and reading and crying and crying and crying till I finally got past it. And I was like, <sighs> so now I'm like, now I can read it again. So I'm still at the beginning parts of the book for sure. Um, so I don't really know if I'd recommend it or not, but it's just something different. I'd been reading a lot of um, books about like the 20s and writers in Paris. And I'm like, I need to get out of that. I need something different. So this is definitely different. <laughs> but let me know your book recommendations down below as well, because I'm definitely looking for another book to read after I finish this one. I want something lighthearted. Like I think I want to read like a comedian's book or something like that. I've read um, Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I've read all of Mindy Kaling's books. I love her books. <laughs> Um, so let me know if you have any suggestions down below. So those are all of my April favorites and fails, whatever I call this video. I feel like I change it every month, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. I know these tend to be some of my longer videos because I just can't shut up. But other than that, I hope you'll subscribe to catch my dupes video that's coming soon that I'm pumped about. And I hope that you'll go back in time and watch my recent Target haul and my recent what to buy at Sephora video, which I will also link below. And other than that, I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.